Okay, good morning. We do not have a lot of time, so we're going to uh, move our cars up to the turn five area with the Star Mazdas behind us, and we're moving out to the pit lane prior to the uh, IndyCar two-seater ride. So uh, I have minute by minutes up here for you guys to pick up. Uh, basically, we need everybody up at the false grid at nine o'clock. I'm not worried about the order in which the cars arrive at the false grid or the equipment or anything like that. The primary issue being that the Mazda guys are prepared to order up and get up there behind you. Uh, because we're going first. Once we get into pit lane, IndyCar will have the two-seater out, and that will, that will be the period of time that we take to get the cars into grid order and lined up in pit lane uh, for, our, for our race, which will operate essentially the same way as yesterday, five minutes, one minute driver start. Uh, we'll dispatch the safety car for the one plus pace lap. Pulsator must maintain the safety car speed until display of the green flag. And then post-race, the procedure will be very similar uh, in terms of the top three in the winning national car. Drivers left at the top of the pit lane. As far as the rest of the cars, drivers right at the top of the pit lane. So directly opposite where those top three in the national car are. Because at this point, Star Mazda will be uh, ordering their cars at the pit exit and heading out to do their race. We will remain in the pit lane for the entirety of the Star Mazda race before all of us will be released to return counter race and driver's right all the way to five. There will be cars loading in at that point and we're going to have crossing traffic. So you need to stay driver's right and return here to the paddock. Uh, all the drivers right, uh, same lap distance of 18 as it was yesterday, and I'm going to let Gerardo chat for a moment uh, about some of the specifics of the circuit. Okay, um, as you might figure, I do want to say something about turn one. None of you, none of you have all the information about what happened yesterday at turn one, especially the driver, because you have your helmet on, you're in the race car, and you see a very narrow window of what happens. Everybody that was watching from outside the car also does not have all the information because we were very limited on TV cameras, and none of us were actually standing in turn one to see it happen firsthand. And even if somebody was standing in first turn one, seeing it firsthand, how could they possibly have watched every car's break point and every car's movement in the turn? So if you spend a lot of time thinking about yesterday with less than 100% of the information, you're wasting your energy when you should be spending it on today's race. Okay, so at some point you have to close the books and move forward. And as you try to evaluate what happened yesterday, think about the things that you can control. If somebody hits you from behind, you have no control over that. If you hit someone, you have control over that. So it's your responsibility to make sure you're not the one that hits someone else. Also, if you expect a field of 20 cars to go three wide through turn one, you have bad expectations. It will not happen. Somebody's going to hit a bump and understeer because the car is no longer on the ground. Right, that's understeer, right? We can't turn. The car's in the air and it collides into another car. That driver blames you. But there are all these factors at play with the bumps, with understeer, with term, term one being three wide. You guys gotta know that something's not gonna work if you take that level of risk. Okay, none of us saw it coming, or else it would've, wouldn't have happened. If you knew that was gonna happen, you wouldn't slow down. Now that you know it's gonna happen that way, you'll make a better choice today. Okay, it's everybody's responsibility. Today is a product of your whole season. The whole season of learning, of learning to give better in in uh, information to your engineers, learning to write better notes, learning to race better, recognize your own on the track, recognize when someone else misses a shift or has a little oversteer and you can attack at the next turn. Today is the product of your whole season. So show us that. Show us all your tricks, all your best driving.
uh, technical things. Uh, turn 8 was changed overnight. IndyCar sent us an email saying the inside wall at turn 8, which is the turn right hander at the end of the pit strip, okay, the asphalt corner, the inside wall has been moved onto the track by four feet. So now it's a tighter turn. They did that to add space to pit exit, to make pit exit safer. And because of that now, the yellow line that you weren't supposed to cross and pit exit is now allowed to put your left side tires over the line. Okay, so the wall has moved onto the track by four feet. The corner is tighter, the radius is tighter by those four feet. Everybody understand? Okay, you only have one opportunity to see that before the race. Also, remember always to keep your options open on the track. Don't put yourself in a, in a desperate situation. I know that there's times when you have to do that, but be very careful about when you do. Also, I walked the track last night, and now there is rubber on the racing line, which means offline is really low grip, especially in the asphalt portions of the track. Be very careful about choosing to go offline. There is now a lot more grip online to pop. Okay, and lastly, I know I gotta be quick, is to remain with your calm and relaxed mind when you drive. The process of getting in the car and bugging in should be your relaxation time. Okay, whether you sing music to yourself, whether you do visualization of your laps, whether you have a phrase or you associate your past good performances to today, whatever it takes to make you calm and relaxed so that you make better choices. Think only about the things that you can control. Okay, spend all your time and mental energy on the things you can control. And lastly, thank you very much to those of you who did that exercise on the podium yesterday. You know, things change with the results later on. But you guys that were on the podium did a fantastic job of thanking Baltimore and giving great talks on the podium. Thank you so much for that. And uh, since this is our last meeting of the season, I just want to thank you all for your commitment to racing and giving so much to it. Thanks. housekeeping in terms of transporter movement. Uh, they are going to disassemble the barriers at Charles Street, which is this road just at the end of the exit of the loading dock before we go up the hill so the transporters can move out uh, to the O lot. Uh, those, those will be removed uh, within an hour of the end of the Indy car race. Uh, so anybody that wants to move out quickly should be lined up and ready to go so that once they open that, they can, they can take off. Uh, otherwise, uh, all trucks must be out by midnight from this location. So to echo uh, just a couple of things that Gerardo said, this is our last meeting. We're going to go off and do our last race. I have really appreciated your professionalism, your hard work, your patience in putting together a very good season. And I'm looking forward to showing it again for one more race before we end up we're closing the door on 2011. Thank you very much for being here and have a great day.